Hey guys, what's up? By Sexatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video. And in this one, I'm talking about an announcement uh, that Supercell has put out regarding the new update uh, that we're going to be seeing soon. And uh, specifically, the part that people are really paying attention to because it's so important to the game, uh, which is friendly challenges. So I think it's going to have a pretty profound impact on war and uh, the game in general. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the implications of it, at least from my perspective in this video. Um, but I am a little bit late to put out a video. I know a lot of people already have, a lot of the big YouTubers, and uh, you guys might have seen that. I sat back, I watched a few of those, uh, looked at the announcement itself that Supercell put out on the forums, and uh, now that I've had a few uh, hours, I guess, to think about it, um, I'll give my opinion, but first I just want to talk about what it's it, exactly it, it involves, for those of you guys who don't know. Uh, basically, uh, it's friendly challenges uh, being added to the game, which is a system in which you can uh, request in the clan chat uh, for someone to attack your base. You can choose any of your six layouts, so your three home villages, your three war bases, and uh, you can just uh, hit the request, almost like you're requesting troops from what I know, and uh, uh, you'll choose a base for, for them to attack, and they can almost sandbox it. Whatever troops they have cooked up, they can use on it, uh, and you can obviously edit your village to make it whatever you want uh, before they attack it, and you can choose what kind of base they're attacking, and then uh, they hit attack. It doesn't cost them any troop space. They have to have the troops trained up, I think, but once they're trained up, they don't lose them. They just stay in their army camp even after the attack, and uh, there's no cost, and there's no loot gained. So it's kind of, um, a, a, kind of a sandbox-type feature within the game, which is something that I was really surprised to see, but... Um, it looks like there's not going to really be any limitations from what I've seen as far as how often you can do this, um, any kind of timer on it, or anything like that that's going to uh, kind of safeguard using this to copy the opponent's base in war, uh, from what I know. I mean, obviously nothing's been finalized because it hasn't been released yet, but uh, as far as what I know, it's basically just going to be whenever you want, you can you know put your base out there in the clan chat and uh, whichever base that is, someone can attack it as many, as many times as they want. And uh, not that it matters that much, but it's not going to cost them any, uh, any uh, gold or elixir or anything like that. Uh, just kind of a free thing to do, um, a friendly challenge, which is kind of like what they have in Clash Royale. So when you see this kind of thing, you have to kind of think about why Supercell is doing this. Because to me, it seems a little bit contradictory to what we've seen from them over the past uh, month, month or two. And uh, if you look at Clash Royale, they actually have a pretty similar system where you can friendly battle your friends. And I think that's always kind of a cool thing to have. Uh, it's always it's fun to play in Clash Royale for me to be able to, you know, request when I'm hanging out with someone uh, at school or something and then just be able to play a three, four minute game uh, against them. So uh I think they're trying to get that same kind of fun feature in Clash of Clans, a bit of a social aspect, and uh, it's immediate. It's something that doesn't take time, because everything in Clash of Clans takes time, pretty much. You have to train troops for every attack, uh, you have to take the time to build bases, you have to uh, wait in war. I mean, everything is just so drawn out, you have to wait for upgrades for up to two weeks. It's a very uh, time-requiring uh, game, so... Uh, is this is kind of something that I think to balance that to make it that immediate uh, you can go in there with troops and uh, attack once and then attack as much as you want you can you know tweak your army stuff like that but um, there's kind of a problem with that and you have to think that Supercell saw this coming when they uh, decided to implement this feature I mean I'm I'm gonna give them at least a little bit of credit that they're not so uh, uninformed or naive that they're going to think that this isn't going to be used as a form of modding because um, pretty obviously what you can do with this, it's not like this is some kind of uh, secret way to get around the system. You can copy the opponent's base in war and uh, let's say okay, let's say my clanmate wants to attack a certain base. I myself can copy that base, you know, tile for tile on my own base, then I can request uh, for the, someone to attack it in the clan chat. He can go in there with whatever army comp he wants, attack it as many times as he wants, uh, I mean, as many times as he wants from what I understand, and uh, practice until he's confident he can get the three star. Now, okay, there's the thing that you're not gonna know where traps are on the first hit, but first of all, 
you can still get a pretty good idea of how your attack's gonna go, even if you don't know where the giant bombs and the Teslas are. And also, uh, as soon as the base has been attacked once, then you definitely know where they are. So whoever's setting up the identical base puts the traps in the same location as the actual base you're going against in war, and then there you can just, you know, spend as much time as you need to to get the three star, assuming that it's doable, which it in most cases is. I don't think there's any base at Town Hall 9 or probably even Town Hall 10 that can't be cracked given enough time. So that's an obvious repercussion that's going to happen. And uh, I think this is really going to uh, hurt the war community, the fair play community specifically, because it's what, what war is and what the great thing about it is, is that it's not entirely a time-based thing. Trophy pushing, uh, farming for the most part, those are kind of time-based things. However much time you put into it, that's what you'll get out of it. I mean, if you're willing to, you know, be on Clash of Clans until it literally kicks you off and uh, continue to search, train the troops, uh, you can get pretty high in trophies. The same thing for farming. If you just keep farming, you'll get your base upgraded pretty quick. But uh, for war, you only have the two attacks. And, you know, you can plan for a certain amount of time, but planning can only get you so far. At a certain point, you know, things are going to go wrong. You need the skill to be able to adapt. So the beautiful thing about war was that it's something that wasn't based off time. It was something that was more based off skill. Um, you can go on, tw you know, twice for one, for every other day, you know, do your attacks. It doesn't require a ton of time. And that was the great thing about war, in my opinion. But what this is doing is it's saying whoever is going to win a war, assuming people you know who are competitive enough will take the time to mirror the other op opponent's bases, is saying whoever takes the most time to try to crack it like a Town Hall 10 or Town Hall 11 base wins. And that's, that's now the resource that people uh, have to utilize to win a war. It's no longer skill. Now it's just who has the most time to sit down, uh, you know, try on their clanmate's base, the identical base, who has the much the most time to uh, crack a base to find out how to three star it and then to duplicate that in the actual war itself. So is this affecting a lot of people in Clash of Clans? Probably not uh, as far as breaking the war for them because remember that there's the huge uh, community that's very casual and uh, this is something they're probably going to like, that they're going to welcome because it's giving them an opportunity to practice their skills, to get better without having to uh, you know, be as scientific about the game as people are in the war community. They don't have to, you know, study it as much or try to uh, tone their skills as much because they can just practice it on one of their clanmates' bases. And uh, that is, I guess, a bit of a benefit is that people will get better and their skills will develop as they're able to attack more. Uh, but this is obviously just legalizing modding within Clash of Clans and not only legalizing it, but just giving it to the players on a silver platter because it's an in-game feature that people can now use. So um, I think this is a little bit contradictory, what I was saying earlier, to what Supercell has been doing because we just finished the uh, modding, uh, the banning of all the modders, and not everyone got banned, obviously. There's a lot of people that didn't, but we were starting to get chunks of modders uh, taken out of the war community. I think there was a few high-level uh, war clans that used mods that were disbanded because the players got banned and they just kind of fell apart. So I think it was working and uh, we were celebrating that. But now they're after all that, they're just kind of letting pretty much something that's equivalent to modding be a thing in the game. Because uh, it's really doing the same thing. It's practicing an attack over and over again until you perfect it. And then from there, you can just do it in your war. And the three star really doesn't mean anything, in my opinion. I think... Some people will value, you know, you know, you spent the time, you sat down there, got it done. You still have to have some skill to do that. Even if you have a ton of time, you still have to be able to find out the right formula to take out the base with the right combination of troops. And that is true to some extent. I see that argument. But for me, and I think for much of the war community, we don't, we don't value that as much as we value a skilled, well-planned attack where you only get one try on the base. And I think that's something that uh, war has been based off in the One High Family and in other Fair Play clans. And uh, not having that there is really going to make war a lot less fun, in my opinion. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and say what I think is going to happen now as a result of this. Because to me, I think if this is a thing, it's going to be pretty clear what's going to happen to the war scene and Clash of Clans in general. 
And uh, as far as how sure I am that this is going to be how the update looks, I I think I watched Jake's video, Jake from the One Hive 1.0 clan. He actually, from what I heard and what he was saying, talked to Supercell, and they are pretty you know firm on having this being implemented in the game. So it's not like something that they're just putting out there to see what people feel about it. It seems like it's something they're really planning on uh, introducing into the game. So if we assume that it is going to be uh, implemented in the game, I think that pretty quickly uh, you're going to see clans that either choose to spend the time or don't, and that will determine whether a clan is the top war clan. Because I can tell you right now, One Hive uh, Genesis as a clan, we cannot beat even uh, kind of a mediocre clan if they're willing to spend the time to use this kind of uh, use this feature to perfect their attacks because it, it, there's no way to beat that if you can try as many times as you want it's just a matter of how much time they're willing to spend so even if a clan that has mediocre attacking skills is willing to sit down and break every one of our town hall 10 bases figure out how to three star it we can't uh, contend with that assuming they have somewhat okay bases so that's really what's going to determine what clans are good from now on is uh, what clans are willing to uh, sit down and take the time to do this and uh, I really don't think that's a good thing in the war community. I think, and from what I've seen, there's been a huge outrage in the uh, Fair Play War Clans FPC. Uh, people really not liking this new feature, and uh, I agree with them, obviously. Uh, one more thing I want to say is that I think, I mean, are clans that feel... Uh, like how I feel. I'm not saying this is how Genesis feels. I really haven't had the time to t sit down and talk to people, but I, I assume they're not a huge fan of the update either. Uh, but clans that are feeling the way I feel, I think are going to try to do arranged wars where using this feature is not an option, where it'll be policed within the clan. They'll say, hey guys, we're not building bases uh, to mimic the other clan's bases. We're just going to play how it used to be. I think that could be something that could uh, at least make arranged wars back to normal. Because does anyone really want to do an arranged war where you sit down on a Saturday and say, okay, let's put these bases up on the screen. How are we going to crack these? We have an unlimited amount of tries. We can spend eight hours here if we need to. I don't want to do that. I don't think many people in the fair play community uh, want to do that. That's you know what modders used to do because uh, they had the time, I guess, or something like that. They were willing to sit down and spend that amount of time. But I think the whole appeal of the fair play war community was first of all the thrill of and the the joy of having that one try and also the fact that you don't have to waste your entire weekend you know trying to plan it to plan a three star on a base uh, or just by practicing it over and over again so uh <clears throat> excuse me uh i because of that i think we're going to see some arranged wars uh that might you know have uh, alternate rules where you can't use that kind of uh, feature within the game, etc., etc., to try to make it how it used to be. But to be honest, I mean, you can kind of do that, but when you're ever you're doing a, just a regular war with a random search, the clans are going to use what's available to them. So, you know, not going to blame them there. I don't even know what we're going to do in Genesis. I'm not sure if we're going to use this or not or what's going to happen. I'm I, I really don't know, to be honest, but clan, most clans at least are going to use this, and uh, it's going to be a, a choice, you know. You have to basically use this to be competitive if you're going against even an okay, okay clan. So, uh, as you can see, I'm pretty uh, far against it, um, and I really don't know what's going to happen to Clash of Clans, what's gonna, what One Hive Genesis is going to do about this. I'll be sure to let you guys know. Uh, when I when I, when we talk about this a little bit more, but um, this is one of those uh, situations where I really don't know uh, how this is going to affect our clan. I think, like I've said, I can uh, speculate pretty good to my to my knowledge as far as how clans in general are going to treat this. But as far as our specific clan, uh, that's something that I'm just I'm not sure about. So uh, we'll see in in Genesis how we want to deal with this. Um, and I know one thing is the, the hitchhiker video. I was planning on. Uh, making a video on how you can apply to that. It's not going to be called Hitchhiker. That's what got people tend to call it because I think uh, Jake's channel started with that name. But uh, where I go around visiting war clans, uh, that series, I'm going to try and get that application out. But with all this craziness going on, I uh, hope, you, hope you guys can understand if it's going to take me a little while 
to uh, see where I want to go with uh, with that series and if I want to pursue it because uh, you know the the state of the game comes first in my opinion. So uh, you'll hear more about that series soon and uh, if everything's going okay, I should get the uh, the form out for you guys to fill out if you want to apply to that series. So anyway, uh, really crazy time and uh, I hope they don't implement it. But every sign. Uh, everything I've heard is telling me that they are going to put this in the game, so we'll have to see how this affects us, but uh, like I said, war is not looking good, at least the war that I know and that you see on the channel. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Tough video to make, I know. Uh, so let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm interested to see kind of your guys' opinion on that, and uh, you'll, you'll definitely hear more from me and uh, from what's going on in Genesis soon. So stay tuned for that, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.